So here's some background statement. Here's my family. I'm Jim. My wife is Shireen. She's right here. I have four children. I'm Breen, Sabrina, Josiah, and Ben. So there's our four kids. So I'm going to go through some simple logic just so that your minds can be trained. All right? Through this, you're going to be trained. It, it takes one minute to, for me to train your mind properly. All right. Jim, Shireen, Shireen, Jim, and their children left a campsite and hiked up a mountain. All right? That's statement number one. Upon reaching the mountaintop, Jim saw a dragon in a lake. That's statement number two. <coughs> when the tours came back to Houston from the campsite, they told others about the dragon they had seen on the mountaintop. Did Umbreen hike up a mountain? We don't know. No. It says, that's my family, Jim, Shireen, and their children. Maybe it's just Jim, Shireen, Sabrina, and Josiah. We don't know if Umbreen went. Right? We don't know. So it's a simple little logical statement. Did the tours go together up the mountain? We don't know. Jim, Shireen, and the children left the campsite and hiked up a mountain. Let me tell you what happens in my family. <laughs> we, we get to the airport. We get to, to security all at the same time. Let's just take my wife and myself. We get to security at the same time. I get to the gate 20 minutes before she does. Because I just walked to the gate. We left security at the same time, but she goes to Starbucks, she stops here, she stops there. and she. So just because they left at the same time doesn't mean they went together. Then, you take when we have kids. I mean, especially when they're teenagers, they just disperse. And then shortly before the flight, boom, they converge. This is normal. You go to the store. They all, they just all take off. Then they converge back at the car. So just because they went doesn't mean they went together. This is just normal, normal life. Did Shireen ever see a dragon? We don't know. We have no idea. Uh, it, it, it says Jim saw a dragon and the tours came back and told others, but maybe it was just Jim and, and Josiah. We don't know. We don't know if Shireen ever saw a dragon. Did Shireen ever tell others about the dragon? We don't know. I mean, some, some of the tours, so two of them did. We don't know if Shireen did. And how many dragons did Jim see while on the mountaintop? Well, he saw a dragon in a lake. Maybe he saw a dragon in a tree, too. <laughs> it doesn't, we don't know. But you see that there's no discord between any of these statements. All right? We just don't know because it's not specific enough. So what happens is this. People go to read their Bible, and they extract their brain, and they put it over here, and they start reading. This is normal. And then they go, and they, they want to do calculus or, 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 or diffy or something, and they put the brain back in, and they do that. So we're just going to keep our brains and think about these simple statements of logic and then start to go through this. Here are some records of the resurrection that raise questions for people. They'll read the Bible with their brain outside of their head and they will, they will say, this Bible makes no sense. It's all mixed up. It says in Matthew 28, 1. Now after the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to the grave. Okay, so it mentions two women. One named Mary Magdalene and another woman named Mary. There are a ton of Marys in the New Testament. We don't know which one, all right? So two women are mentioned. Matthew 28, 10. Now they were Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary the mother of James and also other women with them. We're telling these things to the apostles. So there's three women named plus others. Could, could have been two could have been 2,000. We don't know. All right? We just don't know. Are, are, is there incongruency between these two? No. Because this mentions two. This happens to mention more. But this doesn't say two women and two women only. This happens all the time when you're telling a story. Do you, when you tell a story about something, do you name every person who was there present at that time? No. Only the people of interest to you for that particular story. This is normal. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome brought spices so that they might come 
and anoint him. So it mentions three women. It doesn't say those were the only women. It mentions three women. How come Salome wasn't mentioned up here? Well, maybe she's one of the others. Again, no incongruency here. Now they were Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary the mother of James and also other women with them were telling these things to the apostles. So it mentions three. Where's Salome? Well, where, where's Joanna here? This author at this time in the story is just mentioning those. There's, again, this doesn't mean that there's inaccuracies. No, this is just normal reporting. Now, on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came early to the tomb while it was still dark and saw the stone already taken away from the tomb. Only one woman is mentioned. Here, multiple women are mentioned. But that's okay. Never said Mary and Mary only. This is normal reporting, as we'll see. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you're looking for Jesus who has been crucified. He is not here, for he has risen. It says, the angel. It doesn't say multiple angels, but it doesn't say... There could have been a hundred angels, and an angel said this to her. Entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting at the right, wearing a white robe. And they were amazed. And he said to them, Do not be amazed. You are looking for Jesus the Nazarene who has been crucified. He has risen. He is not here. Behold, here is the place where they laid him. Again, here they're giving a description of what one of those angels looked like. And while they were perplexed about this, behold, two men suddenly stood near them in dazzling clothes, and as the women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground, the men said to them, Why do you seek the living one among the dead? He is not here, but he has risen. And it is a very simple thing to put all of these together like we're going to see. This is normal reporting. Go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. And they, that means the women, left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to report it to the disciples. So here they're running to report it to the disciples. That's what it says. But go, tell his disciples and Peter, he's going ahead of you to Galilee. There you'll see him just as he told you. They went out and they fled from the tomb for trembling and astonishment had gripped them. And they, meaning the women, said nothing to anyone for they were afraid. Look at that. They ran and reported to his disciples. They said nothing to anyone and they were afraid. Uh-oh. We found an error. No. This is all entirely explainable. This, we'll see, brings authenticity and validity to the resurrection account. Here are one of several possible initial resurrection event scenarios that corroborates the four gospel accounts. How do you make sense of these four accounts? Well, women set out for the grave to anoint Jesus' body with spices. There are several women, including Mary Magdalene, Salome, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and one or more. So there were five or more women set out to go to the grave. Do they all get there at the same time? No. This is normal. You might all be wanting to go someplace. My wife and I, we go to church. We sit next to each other in church every Sunday. We never go together. We go in two separate cars. We do. Because she goes earlier to cook some food and I go a little bit later. It used to be that I would go earlier and she goes later. And when we had one car, it was big trouble. And, and, and you know, she'd be in the house changing you know, one of the kids' diapers and I'm in the driveway honking the horn. I don't know why she came, up so, came out so upset. What's the problem with that? But when we got two cars, we were much freer. But we, all end, we ended up at the same place, but we didn't leave together. Mary proceeds, we, Mary proceeds faster than the others and arrives at the grave before the others arrive. Mary sees the stone rolled away, Jesus' body missing. She sees no angel, no Jesus. She immediately turns and runs to report to Peter and John. While Mary is off getting Peter and John, the other women arrive at the tomb. The other women arriving at the tomb see the stone rolled away and angels telling them that Jesus is risen from the dead. Terrified, they flee and become scattered as they run. Now, I ask you, are you going to see some angels and not get terrified? Men standing in dazzling apparel? So they run. This is not Cupid. And they run. 
Now you've got a bunch of women running. It's just, just dawning. It's hazy out. There's trees in the way. You think they're all going to hold hands and just run together? No, just run. I mean, there's one this way, one this way, and two this way, and they just run. Sometimes during the other women's, that's not including Mary, flight, they become divided and Jesus appears to more than one of them, but not all of them. He comforts those he appears to and tells them to tell the brethren, which they do. The other women who are fleeing and not present at the appearance of Jesus continue to run away and out of fear tell no one about their sightings, i.e. the moved stone and the angels at the tomb. Normal. Jesus appeared to just some of the women that fled. Maybe he was trying to gather them up and he's like, hey, hey. No, they're going off in different directions. While the other women were in flight from the tomb, John and Peter arrived with Mary likely running near them, probably behind John and Peter. Why would Mary be running behind? I just assume that men run faster than women, and I understand that's not a valid assumption today. But I'm just assuming that. And it does say that John got to the tomb first, he was looking in, and then Peter just came and pushed him away and went in. That's what it says. Peter and John see the grave closed, but see no angels, no Jesus. John leaves for home believing, Jesus, uh, and Peter leaves for home in amazement. Mary is left standing at the tomb without John and Peter. Mary then sees and hears angels. Then she sees Jesus, first thinking him to be the gardener, until he calls her name. After seeing and hearing and clinging to Jesus, she runs to tell the disciples that she sees him. Mary's seeing of Jesus occurs moments before his appearance to the other woman in number six. This is one of many ways you could put this together and you say, oh, no, 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 no. Come on. This is too confusing. No, this is normal. This is normal. And we will see that now as we go through this. Okay, if the resurrection account had been fabricated, there never would have been an account over four Gospels like this. It never would have been described this way had it been fabricated. Such an account argues against its fabrication. We'll look at this in more detail. There w- they would have waited. If the resurrection account had been fabricated, they would have waited a prudent amount of time, like a hundred plus years, before publishing the account, such as the form of legends to ensure that all witnesses have died. You never have a legend start when people are still alive. You generally wait hundreds of years before you start a legend because you want everyone who could have been there to have died. This started immediately after the resurrection. Boom. The story started propagating immediately after the resurrection. This is not the form of a legend. The early origin of the resurrection argues against its fabrication. They would have published the account far from the venue of its occurrence. You never publish the account right where it happened. You start telling me about the resurrection right there in Jerusalem where it happened? No, do it up in the Galilee or in the diaspora, really far away in Rome started, where nobody's around. This is how legends start. never starts in the city where these folks reside. The resurrection account beginning in Jerusalem argues against its fabrication. Had they been fabricating it, they never would have started this in Jerusalem. They would have been more selective with the choice of witnesses. They would have been much more selective. Remember it says, And he appeared to Cephas and to the twelve. After that, he appeared to more than 500 brethren at one time, most of all who were who remain until now, but some have fallen asleep. He appeared to James and all the apostles, and last of all, to me. So he's saying, here they are. You know who they are. You know who the twelve are. There's 500 people walking around, most of them still alive, that saw this. Here they are. You never do this with a legend. You don't give people who have eyewitness accounts, not just one making it up. Lots and lots of them. This is not a made-up story. This never would have happened. And remember, hallucinations are not shared. You would not have had 500 people hallucinating at the same time. You don't even have two people hallucinating the same thing at the same time. 